So I'm out today. I want to create a sawhorse to make it easier to process my firewood. So you can see these two trees here are relatively straight for aspen. So I'm going to fall them and uh, utilize those. Sorry for the crooked videotaping. I didn't bring a tripod out with me right now. I just grabbed my silky and come out to fall these two. Well, I'm going to put the camera away, fall the other one, get this one untangled from the tree. It's a little dangerous doing this with one hand. I fell the trees, drug up the pieces that I wanted. I've marked a rough length for the pieces that I want to form the X. And now I'm just going to give them a quick cut. So we're going to have to make six of those. Shuffle these down to show you guys how I did this. I just cut a sapling, put a little mark on it. Some place here that I currently can't see. Right there, put the ends flush. That'll be the next two. So that's our three X pieces. The next step 
is going to be determining runners that run along and we're going to need three of those and we won't have enough wood with what we got so i'm going to have to go fall another tree now the length of these runners is going to depend on how long a pieces of wood you want to process for me i'm just going to make these flush then i'll find one more chunk that'll work for the last stringer. I'll get back with you guys once I have that other piece. All right. So now we've got our stringers cut and we've got our legs cut. I've got them all laid out. Again, I'm using a stick to mark so I get everything the same. So this now I've stuck underneath here just to make sure I'm the same distance roughly to the ground, which is good. I'm just eyeballing to make sure my log is square. Then I'll just put a mark on each side and underneath on this one and that's where I'm gonna have to notch out now I got one leg to go That might be a good use for that flip back, that flip spar back. And now, once we have everything marked like that, you'll see when you flip it over, can you grab the camera and bring it close please? You can see down here, maybe you can't. Let's see if we can get you good and close. You can see on the logs here, 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 and here. here. These are where our notches are going to be so they can fit together. Holy crap. Can you grab my shred out of there, please? And the mallet. We made this mallet. The knife we're using is a Schrade, the 52 model. Big fan of these knives. As you can see, you can pry, you can beat, you can baton. They work really well for pretty well every purpose. And the back part. Oops. So now, I don't know if you guys can see, but we've got our notch dug out. That'll work. Dogs are running around having a heck of a time. Now, 
once I flip this back, you guys will be able to see. Hopefully. How they interlock together like that. I should have cut all these. And you can see how everything's all interlocked. It'll make it a lot stronger. Uh, I'd like to take a pin and put a pin right through here. Take a, a T-handle, auger right through. And doing that, if you make your pin tight enough, will make it nice and strong and then X-lash your cordage. And that's what we will be doing uh, when the time comes. So we're going to move along now. I'm not going to film all of them, but I'm going to just knock out the notches in the same format that we were. All right, so here we are. We've got our pieces made up here. You can see there's this piece here. And then there's that piece there that's kind of behind Caleb. And uh, them are the two pieces. Now you're going to notice when you look down them, that they appear to be different spacing. Now, we did that so that when we bring them three pieces up, they had to be spaced differently so that the logs went side by side, but we still kept the same length of middle log. So to do that, I had to move two out of the three logs closer together or a little farther apart, the width of the previous log so that they'd all just mesh when we brought it up together. Um, when we do bring that together, I can go over that in more detail where it makes more sense when you actually see it happen. Right now, we're just on a bit of a hold up, um, waiting to get our drill so we can drill down through these and put a couple dowels in there. It'll make it a lot stronger. Uh, if I get too impatient, I'll just do it all in cordage and I, I won't use dowels, but dowels would definitely make it a lot stronger. But anyways, that's where we're at right now. All right, so uh, we're going to just dowel this later because we can't get a hold of our drill right now. So we're going to just wrap this stuff in cordage for the time being. So to do this, all I'm going to do is a Canadian jam knot. And for that, all you need is a stopper knot at the end. I don't know if you guys can see this. A stopper knot at the end. Tie another just overhand knot and you'll pass the tail of the cordage through that knot and then just work it back and forth to pull it tight. It's an excellent starting knot for these kind of applications. And you can get it right good and tight. It's a very, very, very good starting knot. Now I'm just going to cross wrap these. Should have left myself a bit more cordage, but fortunately, sometimes that's the way that it goes. I'm going to bear, barely, barely have enough to do this. Just going to finish it off. With a clove hitch. And that should do it. So that's piece one. Do you want me to film Pull all of another them? Another hank of cordage, and we'll do the same thing on all of them. So, this is the sawhorse that we made. A few things I want to go over. This is Caleb. You've Hello. seen him in other videos. So, this is it when we're done. Uh, when we left you guys last, we had the stringer and we had the verticals done for each side. So all we did is lean them together in an A-frame, add another pole down the center, and then lash these three lash to hold these. it together. I'll get to that in a minute. So now, just to give you guys a little peek at what we did here, you can see them are the lashes that we did down below. Now one thing that we did differently that 
you guys probably don't haven't seen before is most people put a log across the top here we chose to go with cordage because we've got people of varying different heights and by being able to spread the bottom farther apart or tighter together it'll effectively change how high our cutting surface is so that's why we chose to go with that um, and then we just threw some quick latches lashes sorry around uh each of the x's there just to hold that center pole and hold it tight. just to hold that center pole and hold it all tight together and as you can see like this is a solid unit and it uh it it is going to work very very well so what we're going to do now is we're going to throw that dead stick on there we'll throw it on top and then we're going to cut a few chunks with the Boreal 21 just to show how it works. Boreal 21 is quite aggressive. So yeah, works well, happy with it nice that we can adjust our cutting height it is quite big and heavy though so that uh, that might take a little bit of the wind out of its sails for moving it around and using it at different places but we'll likely take it out to our bushcraft base camp and leave it out there for processing firewood so yeah that's it thanks again from a family outdoors I hope you enjoyed this video and that's how we did our bushcraft sawhorse.